We'll continue to bring you the freshest news right here on Channel 405, straight from Dubai. And today I am joined by a well-renowned figure here in the entertainment space in particular, Mr. Osman. Osman, Osman, thank you so much for joining us. I know that you are a South African, but you are now based in Dubai. How's life? Well, thank you for having me. I mean, having uh, South Africans at our house is an honor, uh, especially in Newsroom Africa. Um, yes, my wife and myself had set up offices in Dubai from 2019 from the entertainment arena. We bring that experience from South Africa. Um, you know, we were one of the largest or are the largest producers of Bollywood events in South Africa and in Africa, um, as well as in the local comedy and international comedy spheres. So, you know, the kings and queens of comedy is our band. We've toured with almost every South African comedian. Uh, we managed Tumi Morake, Riyad Mousa, and a whole host of South African celebrities. Before we get into all of that, and I think um, we need to touch on uh, the last name that you mentioned here, uh, Riyad Musa. He's got a movie that he recently uh, just, uh, you know, um, you know, went on the big screen and all of that. Uh, just, just take us through what was happening. What was the iconic moment that was happening here last night? You know, new material just launched globally uh, last night. Um, it's launched in cinemas in South Africa. Um, it's a movie that's close to, I think, a lot of people can resonate, especially myself and Shaista. Uh, we produced the movie with Riyadh. Um, we started recording the movie in 2019, before the pandemic, you know, the evil COVID-19 um, in September. And it was supposed to launch last year, October, in the big screens. Um, it's a follow-up from material uh, that was produced by Ronnie Aptirka, um and it's now on Netflix and, you know, it's been glo viewed globally everywhere. But you had a cameo on that. I had a cameo <laughs> on it. I mean, that was uh, the first cameo role uh, uh, from there. I can't say the acting bu bug has bit me, but, you know, it, it was fun um, being in, in, in that part. And I shared this, the screens again on the new material with South Africa. Um, you know, just seeing how people have been, you know, with the pandemic persisting, with this new COVID variant in South Africa. You know, we knew the numbers were not going to be exp uh, exponential, but people are going out and they're supporting it, um, especially the global audiences. I mean, we made it available on an app for the next seven days where if it was geo-locked to South Africa, unfortunately, because we wanted you to go to the movies. <laughs> and there's a big announcement coming with DSTV very, very soon um, so people can watch it in their homes. But, you know... People sending us, you know, Instagram posts and tweets and WhatsApp messages from New York, from Canada, from I got a, 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 a request from Brazil. I mean, people from around the world. South Africans are all over, and it's not just South Africans that are enjoying the movie. It's people that have viewed it on Netflix that are seeing that there's a follow-up, and. It means a lot. Um, you know, Kasim Kaif in his journey, uh, Riyad Musa, who he plays, where he started off in material, uh, just finding his comedy feet, leaving the family business, and now tasting fame, now tasting what it feels like to be on the road. Um, and, you know, a lot of parts of that movie is actually true. Riyad started writing the movie in 2016 when we were on tour. Um, and a lot of the funny incidents that had happened between himself and Joey Rastin, who plays Yusuf, his manager, uh, happened between me and him. Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 the opening act, uh, Skalk Poseidonho, that was Sumi Arif uh, in, in real life. And um, I think this time, you know, it's, it's a dramedy. Um, you're going to laugh, you're going to cry, you're going to be all sort of emotions in that movie. And we're quite excited for it, especially now that, you know, um, you can view it at your house in South Africa. There's, like I said, there's a big announcement coming out with that. So in the next few weeks, uh, possibly you're going to be seeing it on DSTV. So we're hoping people will enjoy it. I mean, especially now with this new variant that's there in South Africa, uh, people need to stay safe, be home and not get COVID. And, and, and not to be, you know, um, funny or anything, but, you know, when I was growing up, I knew very little about the, you know, the Muslim community and, and all of that. And, and I think for me, when I watched material, um, and hopefully I will get an opportunity to watch new material, you know, it, it took me inside, you know, and, and I got to see the, you know, the funny side and, and uh, the, the camaraderie in terms of family space. What have you seen as, as someone from that space, uh, what the movie has done? You know, from uh, the movie point, if you look at material and now new material, um, Indian families are just basically that. 
it's it's very family orientated you're always having suppers together everyone's involved in everyone's business um, family businesses have been, and that's what we grew up to um, it resonates very closely to us especially the scenes where Riyadh highlighted Fitas um, you know Fitas was a very um, instrumental part in Indian community in South Africa especially especially with the group areas act and for some of the people you know reliving that and seeing that because we brought that area and we highlighted that area uh, people are quite excited um, you know I don't think you can differentiate between an Indian family or a black, black family or a white family family is family at the end of the day um, you know a lot of people um, can't you know uh, basically they they, they they feel the moments because it's happened to them personally they there's a personal um, touch to it I mean I remember seeing in uh, when in 2012 when Matteo came on Barry Rana uh, critically acclaimed I mean we all grew up to his movie reviews yeah, and, and the Sunday Times, yeah, yeah. And the Sunday <laughs> Times and he had the thing on SABC 3 or whatever yeah. it was called that you know on a Friday Friday night where he reviewed, reviewed the movies and he felt that it was his journey that he had lived. Um, there were a number of people that it resonates with them um, from a family life, from personal life. Riyadh highlights that. Um, and that's what material is all about. It's a feel good movie. Um, it highlights the reality of life and people enjoy it. And I mean, Riyadh has a huge following. He's very loved in, in, in South Africa and abroad. Um, so people go out and support uh, the movies. I mean, earlier on you spoke about how you and Riyadh used to you know, travel around and do uh, shows uh, around, the, uh, around the country and I guess uh, across the world. So you've been someone who's been able to export South African entertainment and talent. Uh, how has it been received by the global audience? You know, um, especially with Riyadh, we start, myself and him started touring in 2010. Um, at the time when we started touring and we started aggressively touring in 2011, 2012, as soon as the movie came out, there were not many arenas that you could play in in South Africa. Comedy was done basically in three cities, which was Durban, Johannesburg and Cape Town. And that's where Blue Blood came in, where the company myself and you know, Shaista founded. And, um, you know, I joined in. But we found the stages. We went to every nook and cranny um, in South Africa. We created stages, we created audiences from your Newcastles to your Ladysmiths to your Peter Maritzburgs where events were not going there, comedy was not going there. And I remember fondly when Riyadh used to ask the question, um, how many people have seen stand-up comedy in a thousand, two thousand seater venue? And one or two people would raise their hands. And we built those stages. And then taking it to the global platform, uh, exporting South African talent has been, it's been amazing. Um, especially going up into the African continent, coming up into the Middle East, um, taking South African talent to the UK. Um, and we, you know, South Africa is a global player. Everyone recognizes South Africa. There's a Madiba story, there's a, a, a Trevor Noah story. Um, and people resonate with it, people come out and support it, especially in the Middle East. Um, you know, we have a huge expat following, um, or South African expat following, and everyone misses home. Everyone wants to see um, that, that uh, get a feel for it, get a little bit of home, um, you know. And with that being said, they bring their fa friends uh, who are not South African. Um, you know, we build new audiences for those for those comedians, for those artists that are here, and the fan following follows through. And you come back, and you and people appreciate, um, you know, what they put on stage. And in parting, just tell all the viewers why they should go see new material. New material, it touches a person in their heart. It's, I would say, you know, sequel, sequels are very hard to follow. I mean, it's it just, I mean, you know, from Spider-Man 1 to 2 doesn't get any better. <laughs> but with new material, it does get better. People, it resonates with a person. It resonates with your heart. You, like I said, you're going to have all your emotions all in one. That's what dramedy is all about. So go out now and catch new material in the cinema and in DSTV box office. I'm proudly South African. We're all proudly South African. So let's support our proudly South African homegrown new material movie.